Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We in this lecture will focus on the Paribhasha Sutras also known as Meta Rules in the system of Paninian Grammar. So far <coughs> amongst the 6 types of sutras we have studied quite a lot of Saudhnya Sutras. Saudhnya Sutra is the first type amongst the six and we have studied the core Saudhnyas technical terms which are of different types that Panini uses in his grammar, in his system. Today we shall focus on the Paribhasha Sutras. So the first question is what is a Paribhasha? And Paribhasha is defined in this way, Parito Bhashyate Anaya, overall systemic statement, a statement which explains how a system behaves, in short a meta rule. They explain how the rules are to be interpreted. Some meta rules are directly stated by Panini in his own sutra, we have studied some of them and we shall be mentioning some of them as well. Some are assumed by him and are made explicit by later commentators based on the statements of Panini. The meta rules become one with the prescription rules namely Vidhi Sutras which we shall study in the next lecture. So Vidhi Vakya so they become one with the rules which prescribe some operation and then they become meaningful. Primarily there are three types of Parivashas, Vachanika, Dnyapaka Siddha and Nyaya Siddha. Vachanika is a rule which is available through a Vachana, a statement a statement of either Panini or Katyayana or Patanjali, the three Munis. Dnyapaka Siddha is a type of Paribhasha rule which is established on account of a particular mention in the Sutra which would turn redundant if such a rule is not accepted. So Dnyapaka Siddha is a Paribhasha which is inferred from the mention of Panini which assumes certain kind of rule to exist. Nyaya Siddha <coughs> has got some varieties. Nyaya Siddha is a rule which is established in accordance with some commonly accepted practice in the mundane behavior as well as in the scientific inquiry. This is Nyaya Siddha. There are special texts devoted to the study of Paribhasha and here are mentioned a few. The foremost amongst them is Paribhasha Vritti of Vyadi composed around 300 BCE which contains 93 Paribhashas. Then there is Brahat Paribhasha Vritti composed by Sira Deva written in around 11th, 12th century CE and it studies 130 Paribhashas. Laghu Paribhasha Vritti by Purushottama Deva 13th century CE which studies 120 Paribhashas. Then Paribhasha Vritti of Nilakantha Dikshita who lived in 17th century CE, this text studies 140 Paribhashas. And <clears throat> the most important text 
which is part of the current curriculum as well is Parivashendu Shekhar composed by Nagesha in the 18th century CE and this text studies 133 Paribhashas. There are several commentaries that are written on this text called Paribhashendu Shekhar which are still studied in modern days. So, so much literature is devoted to explaining the Paribhashas that underlies the importance of the Paribhashas and Paribhasha Sutras. So, we have so far studied some of the Paribhashas. They were all Vachanika Paribhashas. Let us take a recap of the Paribhasha Sutras that we have studied so far. For example, meaning of the fifth case we have already studied which is immediately after and the Sutra 1167 which explains the meaning is Tasmadityuttarasya. This is a Paribhasha Sutra. We have also seen the meaning of the seventh case in the meta language of Panini which is immediately before and the Sutra which states this is Tasminiti Nirdishtai Purvasya 1166. Then the meaning of the sixth case is in place of or instead of in the meta language of Panini. This is stated by the Sutra Shashti Sthana Yoga 1149. So these three sutras, these are Paribhasha sutras explicitly stated by Panini in his Ashtadhyayi. So these three sutras interpret the cases in the meta language of Paninian grammar which is different than how they denote the meaning in the object language and that is why they become extremely important. These are the Paribhasha Sutras that we have already studied. The other fundamental principle that we have studied is that a word form is part of the meaning of the word. In fact, it is the main meaning in the meta language. This we have already seen when we looked at the difference between the object language and the meta language in the Paninian grammar. And this is stated by the sutra Swamrupam Shabdasya Ashabda Saudnya 1168. Swamrupam Shabdasya Ashabda Saudnya 1168. These are the four sutras that we have already studied. These are all Paribhasha sutras. Apart from them, let us try to study some other Paribhashas. Here is the core Paribhasha. This is not stated in the Ashtadhyayi. That Paribhasha is Sthane Adeshaha, Nimitteshu Nimitte Bhyaha. What it means is a substitute comes in place of a substituent in the environment of conditions before and after immediately, immediately before and immediately after. So to show this in the equation form, we can say the following, if A plus B plus C, this is the given situation where B occurs immediately before C and immediately after A and then D substitutes B in this case. So, B is substituted by D in the environment of A before and C after. So, this is the primary function, this is the primary operation as far as Paninian grammatical description is concerned. So, A and C they are considered to be nimittas, conditions, environments. B is considered to be the sthana or sthani and D is considered to be adesha. The primary location of this act of substitution is cognitive apparatus of the speaker 
as well as the hearer in the process of communication. This is the core Parivasha. Sthane Adeshaha Nimitteshu Nimittebhyaha. So, applying this particular Parivasha, we can say that if we have on the left hand side the sentence meaning and on the right hand side the sentence, the sentence meaning is made up of a few word meanings. Each word meaning is made up of prakrityartha and pratyayartha and correspondingly we have a sentence. So, the first bullet on both sides left as well as right represents a generic very general idea as far as very general stage in the process of derivation as far as the artha kasha is concerned on the left hand side and the shabda kasha is concerned on the right hand side and there is a correspondence between these two. Just as we have prakrityartha and pratyayartha etc. Similarly, we have prakriti and pratyaya on the right hand side in the shabda kasha. These are shown in green primarily to refer to the fact that these are still very general stages as far as the derivation is concerned. And now they will get replaced primarily. So, the first prakriti gets replaced by the actual specific gamma and then the pratyaya slot, the pratyaya slot in the first pada gets replaced by t. And similarly, the second pada prakriti and pratyaya slots which are generic, they will get substituted by the respective uh, pratipadika and pratyaya su and pratipadika and pratyaya. So, now here we have the respective uh, pratipadika and pratyaya su and pratipadika and pratyaya. So, now here we have dhatu plus pratyaya plus pratipadika plus pratyaya plus pratipadika plus pratyaya this kind of format. This is a specific format which has substituted the generic format. So, the green color indicates the generic format which gets substituted by the specific one which is indicated in the blue colors. And so, we have gamma t and then a comes in gamma plus a plus t plus rama plus a plus gramam and then gamma gets substituted by gacha in the environment of a and then sa gets substituted by he in the environment of this pada and then we have this gacha becoming gacha, gacha gets substituted by gacha and then we have the word gachati ramaha gramam and then in the environment of ga this which becomes o. So, we have gachati ramo gramam. So, this is how in the environments substitutions take place. The original slot is of this kind which is of very generic nature which is then filled in by prakriti and pratyaya still general samanya and then we fill in this slots by the vishesha gamma and t and so on and so forth and these slots can be replaced by others as well. Instead of gamma you can also put drisha, you can also put stha, da etc etc. Instead of t you can put anti and so on and so forth. So, these slots can be filled in by various elements and then you get these basic elements and then you start processing and further substituting an element in the environment of another element. So, here is the nimitta a which causes gacha to be substituted in place of gamma. This can be described in different ways. For example, Panini can say that this ma is replaced by ch. 
but we see that this gamma gets replaced by gacha. This entire process gets replaced by this process. The entire stage gets replaced by another stage. Then this ch gets replaced by ch. This entire step is replaced by this entire step. And finally, we get gachati ramo gramam as the derived generated sentence in the n from the very generic. One of the other issues that we have studied is the process of speech production in which we studied the properties of each and every sound described in the Paninian grammar in the alphabet. And then we noted down those properties and here is a paribhasha stated by Panini himself which utilizes these phonetic properties in the process of substitution using those properties to select the closest substitute. The sutra is sthane antaratamaha 1150. What it means is in place of a substituent is placed the commonest or the closest substitute. Phonetic properties are formulated as the basis of substitution of verbal elements. This we have seen. For example, Iko Yanachi 6177 says that Yan substitutes Ik immediately before Ach. The example is Dadhi plus Atra, E is the substituent and Yavarala are the four substitutes stated by 6177 in the environment of A coming immediately after. So immediately after before A. E is occurring and so we have four substitutes stated by the sutra 6177 which can come in place of E. Now 1150 will clarify that amongst these four only the one which is the closest to E in terms of the place of articulation namely Y in this case replaces the substituent and we get the Dhya and Atra in place of the Dhi Atra the next stage comes is Dadhya and Atra. The next part of this is another Paribhasha stated in the Mahabhashya on the same sutra and this reads Yatra Aneka Vidham Antaryam Tatra Sthanataha Antaryam Baliyaha. What this means is where the commonality is manifold between a substituent and possible substitute, the commonality of the place of articulation is considered stronger. For example, when we have a stage chi plus through, 7384 prescribes e in chi to be replaced by guna, namely a, a, and o. Guna is a technical term which means a and a and o. So now, here we have a substituent e whose place of articulation is talu, and here we have two substitutes which are closer to this e, a. <coughs> whose place of articulation is kantha and whose pramana is short. This is a short vowel and A has the place of articulation talu. In fact, it has two places of articulation, edai toho kantha talu and also it is a long one. Now amongst these two A and A, the place of articulation of A matches with E even though shortness is the property which also matches with A but the place of articulation becomes stronger and therefore A replaces E in this environment. So the above meta rule says that the proximity in terms of the place of articulation is stronger so E is to be replaced by A and so we get J plus through and then we get Chetru or Cheta. This is an extremely important principle which suggests the phonetic base once again for the process of substitution. Another important set of rules, Paribhasha rules are the ones which talk about the place of substitution. So where do we do the substitution? What is the location? So suppose we have a substituent which has four parts A, B, C and D 
and the substitute which has either one part namely P or which has multiple many parts P, Q and R. So, the question is where should the substitute be placed? In which part of the substituent? Should it replace the entire substituent A, B, C, D or just one part of the substituent? If so, if just one part is to be replaced then which part? Should it be the last one or the initial one or the middle one? Which one? These questions arise and they are answered by four sutras in the Ashtadhyayi. Aloantyasya 1152, Adeparasya 1154, Anekalshit Sarvasya 1155 and Nitya 1153. Nitya 1153 is placed last and not after 52 is for some specific reason which we shall make clear in the course of time in this lecture. Let us study all these sutras now. The first one is Alontyasya. What it literally means is in place of a final sound. Al is a sound, Antya is the final. What it means is a substitute replaces the final element of the substituent. So, suppose we have A, B, C and D as substituent, then a substitute replaces only D. That is the meaning of this rule. And this is considered as a by default rule. Wherever other rules do not apply, this rule applies. For example, we have a sutra Tedadi Namaha 72101, which says that in the environment of a vibhakti, a is the substitute which comes in place of tyad, etc. Tyad, tad, yad. So, suppose we have yad plus sa, sa is a vibhakti. And now this 72101 applies and says that substitute this yad by a. Once again the same question, should this a replace the entire yad or the or ya or a, which one? And the answer provided by 1152 is that this substitute replaces only the final element. In this case only the gets replaced by a and so from yad plus sa we get ya a sa. This a is in coming in place of the. So we have ya a sa and then there is this other rule get which comes in and joins both these together and so we have ya plus sa and then finally we have yaha. This is how Alontyasya functions. This is a by default rule. The next rule is Adeparasya. What it means is a substitute replaces the initial part of the element when substitution is stated in place of an element which is stated immediately after another element. So clearly this is an exception to 1152. So, for example, if we have x, y and z part of one unit plus a, b, c, d part of another unit, in this situation if a substitute is stated to replace a, b, c, d which comes immediately after x, y, z, this is also stated in the rule. That means x, y, z is made a condition for the substitution of A, B, C, D then the substitute replaces the initial part of the substituent A, B, C, D which is A. A becomes the substituent and here is an example E dasaha 7283. What this sutra means is it has got two words Eid and asaha. Eid is 1, 1, asaha is 5, 1. Anasya continues 6 1 from the previous rule. So, what this means is substitute Eid that is long E in place of Ana when it comes immediately after the verbal root Asa. So, we have Asa plus Ana. Asa is the condition for this substitution. So, when Ana comes immediately after Asa, substitute this Ana by E. Now, this sutra says that in such a case, substitute A by E. The initial element of substituent ana that is A that gets substituted by E. So, we have A plus ana gets substituted by A plus E na. We join it and we get the word asina 
which means one who sits. We have the word udasina, which means one who sits on top. This is the second sutra which clarifies the position of the substitution. Next we have another exception to the by default rule namely anekalshit sarvasya 1155. What it means is a substitute replaces the entire substituent. 1152 replaces the final element, 1154 replaces the initial element and now 1155 is replacing the entire substituent. If there are two conditions, if one the substitute is formed with more than one sounds, it should be anekal and two the substitute is formed by one sound okay, but with a marker sh, shit. This is an exception to 1152. So, the entire substituent is replaced by a substitute. So, for example, if you have A, B, C, D as the substituent and P, Q, R as the substitute then because P, Q, R consists of 3 sounds more than 1. So, P, Q, R replaces the entire A, B, C, D that is one and the second situation is if A, B, C, D is the substituent and P only one sound is the substitute but with a marker sh, it is shit then this P with marker sh replaces the entire A, B, C, D. Let us look at the examples. The first one on the left hand side is the example where the substitute is anekal and the second one is the example of the substitute being ekal but with the marker sh. So, in the situation asa plus the aster bhuhu 2452 applies which means immediately before the suffix the substitute the verbal root asa by bhu. Bhu is formed with bh and u anekal. So, this is anekal and so it replaces the entire asa as simple as that. So, then we get bhu plus the bhu replacing asa and so we get the word bhuta. Now, we, if we have the situation idam plus her, the sutra idam ish 533 comes into play and this means immediately before the suffix her, substitute idam by ish. Ish consists of only e which is a single sound but with the marker sh added to it. So, this is shit. So, by application of 1155, this E will replace the entire idam. And so, we get E plus her, namely E her as the final output. And now we come to 1153, which is nietzsche, which says that a substitute which is formed with more than one sounds, that is anekal, but has ng as its marker then the substitute does not replace the entire substituent rather it replaces the final element of the substituent only the final element. So, this is an exception of 1155 which in its turn is an exception of 1152. Thus on the whole we can say that this rule brings back or reinforces the operation stated by 1152. What it means is if A, B, C, D is the substituent and if P, Q, R which is anekal with the marker ng is the substitute then P, Q, R replaces the final element of the A, B, C, D and not the entire A, B, C, D as was the case with 1155 and so we get the output namely A, B, C, P, Q, R. Here is an example. We have dadhi plus a 3 slash 1 and the rule asti dadhi sakthyakshnam anangudattaha applies over here 7175. This sutra means immediately before the vowel beginning suffixes in the third to seven triplet group substitute asti dadhi etc. by an. An has two sounds a and na so it would replace the entire dadhi by 1155 because of it because it is an anekal. But because the marker ng is added to it, now it replaces only the final element of dadhi namely 
E because of 1153 and so we get the dhan in place of dadhi in the situation dadhi plus a we get dadhan plus a and then a is dropped and we get dadhna a and then finally we get dadna as the finished form. So these are the four Paribhasha Sutras which clarify the exact location of the substitution. Three locations, the final position of the substituent which is a by default position, the initial position which is an exception and then the entire substituent. These are the three positions stated. Now we have some sutras which prescribe the augments and some sutras which state the exact location, the place where this augment is to be added. There are three augments stated and two sutras which are explained hereafter. The augments which have the marker T and K are stated by 1146 and the augments which have the marker M is stated by the other sutra. Let us look at them one by one. The first type is the one which states the place to add the augment. So the location of the augment is the subject of this set of Paribhasha Sutras. And there are two sutras here. The first one is Adyantau Takitau. What this sutra means is that the augment with the marker T is made the initial part of the whole to which it is added and the augment with the marker K is made the final part of the whole to which it is added. Let us take the example Ardhatu Kasya It Valade 7 to 35. What this means is that add an augment it to an Ardhatu Ka suffix which begins with val. So in the case of Patha plus Ta, Ta is an Ardhatu Ka suffix which begins with val. So it is to be added to it. <clears throat> now this it has t as a marker, so it is made an initial part of the suffix t. So we get from patha plus t here, we get patha plus e t. This e is added before and so we get the form pathi t. Similarly, we have the sutra anemuk 7 to 82 which says that immediately before ana add the augment muk which is ma to an anga ending in short a. So we have pacha plus pacha a plus ana. Pacha a is an anga with reference to ana and this anga ends in short a followed by the suffix ana. So 7 to 82 applies and adds the augment ma to a of the anga. So we get 7 to 82 applying and so we get pacha a ma because this is kit so it is added here at the end by adhyantav takitav and so we get the form pacha mana. And the second sutra which talks about the place of the augment is midachon tyatparaha 1147. It says an augment with marker ma is added after the final vowel of an element. Here is an example Chatur plus as 1 3 and the sutra Chatur Anaduhur Am Udattaha. The augment a is to be added to the words Chatur and Anaduha immediately before the first five suffixes stated in 412, and so we get Chatu. Now where do we add this a and 1147 says add it after the final vowel in chatur which is this u 
So we add this a after this u, and so now we get chatu a r plus as, and so then there is a sandhi. So this u becomes v chatva a ras, and so we get chatvara. Then there are, there is a rule, Paribhasha Sutra related to accent, which is Anudattam Padam Ekavarjam, 61158. What this means is, excluding one, the remaining Pada gets Anudatta accent. So, Raja Purusha is an example where Samasasya 61223 makes the final vowel Udatta. This A in Sh is Udatta. So it is not marked by any symbol as far as the writing convention is concerned. And so the remaining vowels A, A, U and U, all of them they become Anudatta. The remaining vowels remain Anudatta and are marked with a horizontal bar below the letter as you can see over here. All these four vowels are marked Anudatta because of the Paribhasha Anudattam Padam Ekavarjam. <coughs> Then we have an important paribhasha which deals with the padavidhi based operations and the paribhasha sutra is samarthah padavidhi 211 which means an operation which takes pada as an input is conditioned by samartha meaning having the same meaning and capable of expressing the same meaning. For example, compounding or samasa takes pada as an input. So, compounding is conditioned by Samartha. So, in a sentence if you use the words Radhnya Purusho Gachati, a king's man goes. So, Radhnya Purusho, these two words are connected meaning wise. So, <coughs> they can be compounded provided the compound expresses the same meaning Samartha and the compound is capable of expressing the same meaning. So, Raja Purusha is the compound made and now it expresses the same meaning a king's man goes. Therefore, there is this samarthya and any padavidhi for example, a compound requires samarthya or samarthya as a necessary condition. Then we have another important paribhasha yena vidhis tadantasya 1172 which means the element that acts as a qualifier is to be interpreted as the element ending in that element participating in the grammatical operation. For example, we have a sutra 3197 acho yat, achaha is 5 1, dhatoho is 5 1 and yat is 1 1. Now achaha qualifies dhatoho. So achaha is interpreted as ajantat that is a verbal root ending in a vowel. So the overall meaning of the sutra is add the suffix yat after a verbal root which ends in a vowel. And so we have the verbal root chi which ends in a vowel to which we add the suffix yat and then we get from chi plus yat we get che plus ya and the final form che ya. To summarize, the meta rules are an integral part of the system of Paninian grammar. We have studied these meta rules, several types of meta rules. Different types of such meta rules carry out different functions in the system. The major grammatical operation is the substitution. The meta rules explain the phonetic basis of the process of substitution. The other meta rules explain the exact position of the substitution and sometimes even the augment rules are also considered to be part of the process of substitution. Even the augments are considered as substitutions, unaugmented form gets substituted by an augmented form. To end the lecture, we recite the Mangala Charana taken from Paribhasha Vritti of Nilakantha Dikshita which reads Varadeshvara Yajvanam Nilakanthena Yajvana Namaskritya Satam Prityai Shabdanyayo Vivichyate. I repeat. Varadeshvara Yajvanam, Nilakanthena Yajvana, Namaskritya Satam Prityai, Shabdanyayo Vivichyate. And the five sutras taken from 7.3, Devika Shimshapa Dityavad Dirghasatrashreyasam At. 
केकय मित्रयु प्रलयाना यादेरिया नईवाभ्या पदाताभ्या पूर्व तो ताभ्याम ऐच द्वारादीना न्यग्रोध से केवल से ई रिपीट देविका शिंशपादीवाड दीर्घसत्रेयसा आत केकय मित्रयु प्रलयाना यादेरिया नईवाभ्या पदाताभ्या पूर्व तो ताभ्याम ऐच द्वारादीना एंड न्यग्रोध से केवल से थैंक यू वी शैल स्टडी द नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ सूत्र विधि सूत्र इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर थैंक यू फॉर योर अटेंशन